I don't normally shy away from a head unit install when I got a new vehicle. That was one of the first things I thought about doing, but because of this interesting layout, there really aren't that many options available. Luckily, I remember that these kind of devices exist. This specifically is the AutoCast Picasso 2. There are others like it, but this is the one that I chose to try out. This hijacks your CarPlay enabled system and gives you a full Android experience. Very cool, but not without its quirks. Full disclosure, AutoCast has provided review units in the past, but this is something that I bought with my own money to test out. Anyway, let's check it out. If you have a touchscreen in your car, you're basically set. But if you only have rotary controls, kind of like I do in my situation, it's going to be trickier. You can still use it, you're just going to need some sort of remote. The one I've been using is this Bluetooth one-handed trackball, which works pretty good. It just doesn't have dedicated home and recents buttons, but I've been using an app to reprogram the plus and minus buttons to function as those, and it's been working out okay. At least on Android, I can't speak for iOS, there are apps available so that you can use your phone as a trackpad and keyboard. That works pretty good too, if you don't want to go out and buy something physical. One of the biggest pros of this device is that it works just like a normal Android device. I can give it a data connection, whether that be through Wi-Fi or this thing actually has built in cellular and shockingly, it works with Verizon. I just popped the SIM in, restarted it and it worked. But once you have a data connection, you can get around it just like you normally would. The dock is on the left hand side and that's where your navigation buttons are. The bottom one is the home button. You can also long press that while you're in a supported app to launch the split screen menu. The one above that is the back button, obviously. You can also long press that to get to the recents menu and you'll get some of your common apps above that. But apart from that, you can just go to the Play Store and download whatever it is that you want. The only time I ever have any sort of potential issues is mostly because of the weird aspect ratio of the screen of my car. So that might vary depending on your situation. Some apps, when you go to search for them, like Hulu, for example, aren't gonna show up in the list. You can still get to them if you go to sites like APK Pure and download the APK installer. Just be mindful when you go on those sites to make sure that you're actually downloading what you really want and nothing else. But once you get it installed, chances are it's gonna work just fine. So that's awesome. But there are some quirks. This issue is not gonna be super relevant to people, again, that have touchscreens, but rotary only people, one of the other big you know, benefits of these devices is they function as a wireless adapter for Android Auto and CarPlay. And at least for Android Auto, the mappings for the rotary controls are just awful, especially with the latest cool walk update for Android Auto. It is almost unusable. Technically, you can still kind of get around, but it is just a pain in the ass. I wouldn't bother with it. Specifically, if you're only looking for that functionality, if that's what you want, Get yourself a Motorola MA1 if your car supports Android Auto. And if it doesn't, then you're probably gonna be about just as screwed because other devices that are two-in-one, kind of like the AutoCast U2X that I reviewed some months back, are very likely to also have the weird mapping issues with the rotary controls. You can technically use the remote to control Android Auto and stuff, but that is just, I would not recommend doing that while driving. One issue that I did not run into because I was using cellular instead of traditional Wi-Fi for the data connection is that you cannot have a data connection to the device with Wi-Fi and use wireless Android Auto or CarPlay at the same time because it's using the Wi-Fi for that connection as well. So it can only do one or the other. Keep that in mind, probably not a big deal for most people. If you want to avoid that completely, you can use the cellular connection instead. Another small quirk is that you're stuck to military time. Of course, here in the States, we use 12 hour. So it would just be nice to be able to see 12 hour, you know, in the afternoon so that you're not having to do quick, you know, math to figure out what time it is. Not that it's that big a concern. I reached out to Autocast. They said that they might be pushing out some sort of update or building a firmware that has that built in. I'm not really going to hold my breath on that, but it seems like they might be making steps towards it. The bigger issue, I would say, is that there are potentially some stability issues. In the two to three weeks that I've had it so far, I would say about three to four times a week, I've had to just randomly restart. Sometimes it happens after I've been messing with a bunch of stuff, admittedly. So sometimes I just assume that that's a sign that maybe I'm doing too much. Other times it really seems to happen out of nowhere <laughs> while I'm watching a video. Overall, with this being my first AI box, as they call them, I'm pretty impressed, especially with the simplicity of these things. 
It's just so nice that if you have a touchscreen in your car, it's literally as if you were setting up and using an Android tablet. It's just so nice that it really is that straightforward. If you don't have a touchscreen, as we've covered, you can still get away with using it. But I would love if they really figured out and nailed down the rotary controls. I know that's a small percentage of the market, and I'm sure every manufacturer has their own weird implementation of these things. It would be very much appreciated if they have really figured it out. And that's potentially part of the reason that I doubt that this is going to be my ultimate device. I'm going to test out some other ones. If any manufacturers want to send me another one to test out, you can find my information to reach out to me in the channel description. But if you have any questions about this, the Picasso 2, leave them down below and I'm going to do my best to respond there. I'm going to leave links to the hardware and to all of the apps that I talked about in the description as well. If you use those links, it helps out the channel. Definitely appreciate it. If you liked any of this or if it was helpful, leave a like, subscribe to the channel for potentially future AI box content. Thanks for watching. See ya.